So welcome, Lisa. It's such a nice time to see you and have you in this episode. We're so happy. Thank you. Good to see you as well. This is very exciting. So we would love to hear from you what your major milestones have been and why you considered them so impactful. Leaving Sweden was probably one of the big milestones, mm -hmm. uh, moving to Switzerland and then living there for quite some time. And then... Um, Every job that I had in Switzerland before I started interior design has led to me being able to run a company today. With all these backgrounds, as an entrepreneur, you need to have a lot of different experiences in order to be able to understand the market and know which direction you should go. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, having children is um, a blessing and uh, a huge challenge as well. <laughs> But it's fun. It's fun to see them grow. It's fun to see uh, taking decisions now today when they're a little older on, I want to do this. I definitely don't want to do that. So living in the Middle East is, uh, is a major milestone. I've learned so much about people, cultures, um, respect, um, religions. You get to live their culture there. So I think that is probably one, uh, apart from having children, of course, uh, it's, it's like the biggest milestone mm -hmm. that, that, that I have experienced, mm -hmm. that I have experienced. Yeah. Moving to a place that I didn't know, but, um, yeah. And then obviously starting my company. Yeah. That one milestone is really when you, when you wake up and you start looking at yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and you start working on yourself mm -hmm. and not, and that obviously yoga helped me to that meditate every morning. I do uh, yoga asanas every morning. Like it doesn't mean that I, I don't lose it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can get really upset as well because uh, living with so many cultures around you is also extremely frustrating because nobody does things the way I'm used to still you still remain very square in your head like this is what I learned in school this is what my father taught me this is how it should be no it's not and it's still super difficult mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to to deal with that mm. every day so you because keep learning I keep learning every day yeah all my employees every employee comes from a different country mm -hmm. how do you deal with that as a manager Mm -hmm. As an owner of a company, how do you how do you deal with uh, Hinduism, uh, Catholicism, and Muslim? Uh, how do you make them all get along? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. pure, it's pure pure inclusion, isn't it? And I, I'm I'm fascinated by the the entrepreneurship piece because that's something that Dominique and I have researched, and research shows that entrepreneurs over fifty are five times more successful than the younger entrepreneurs and the startuppers that are 25. And the reason is exactly what you said. You had all those builders before. You had what you learned from Levi's, what you learned from the World Economic Forum, what you learned from your, your parents. And it kind of all compiles together. The day you create that, that little project, which is your business, you have the tools and you yeah. do not have them when you're 25. So I find that fascinating. What we've observed even just this week is that older, let's say 50 plus, we enjoy more seeing others thrive than we did at 2025. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Know that at 2025, right. there was a little bit more competition and the words, even just the confidence, the self-building, the self-confidence, yeah. yeah. even the fact that you're in a posture to say, I'm dealing with four religions. How am I going to do this? Before you might've put up a front or been defensive, whereas now you're embracing it. You're yeah. embracing it and getting on with it and actually enjoying it. So yeah. I think that is a different, I think that is a different. I like it. Yeah, I do. And I'm really happy that my kids got the opportunity to grow up here and be surrounded by different nationalities because they have a completely different view on, on, on the world. Completely. Yes. yes. Speaking of your kids, do you think that these life decisions you've made, do you think that you would have made different decisions had you not had kids? I've been pondering that question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know because I think that life you, you you have a journey to do in your life. There is a journey that is already set for you. Mm -hmm. You can derive from it and go completely, you can go completely lost or you come back to it and you continue and you're deriving and you continue and deriving and you continue. And every time you derive, you learn something about yourself or the world and you continue. Mm -hmm. So had I not had children, I would not have moved to Dubai. Some things are meant to be and some things are meant to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and which is why I also think that, you know, everybody talks about this 40 year life crisis. I don't call it a 40 year life crisis. I think I think that's when you are old enough to start realizing that maybe I made mistakes earlier on. Maybe this is not where I want to be anymore. Passion is calling. What I've always wanted to do is this and this and this. And then if the partner or if they are married or not married, mm -hmm. but if they're married and the partner doesn't follow in that evolution 
I would call that it's not a 40 year crisis. It's because we, when we get older, we get more self-conscious. It's, it's a midlife and we, we see it at 50, we see it at yeah. 40, but this yeah. life reset. And I think yeah. everybody, midlife you reset. know, midlife reset, they, they, they talk about the, um, you know, the, the midlife crisis. It doesn't have to be a crisis. It's a reset. And I love it's a wake up call. It's, it's a, a wake up call. Absolutely. And sometimes absolutely. the partner is with you on it. And sometimes yeah. they're not. In yeah. fact, this week in our four interviews, Two had the reset and they followed and two had the reset and they didn't follow. And right. they both ended up thriving with the decision they made midlife. It's a huge pivot point, Dominique, to spar off of, isn't it? Um, absolutely. The midlife, yes. the midlife absolutely. reset. And, yeah. and the impact always comes from the decisions that we make along the way. And yeah. what we found in the various stories and, and working with a lot of people internationally is that it can be any age, but there comes a time where we take distance and look at life with different eyes, different. Absolutely. And we, we say, well, okay, for, you know, for the rest of what is ahead of me, what will I do with it? And yeah. with whom and where and so on. So there's a different consciousness, as yeah. you said before, uh, yeah. where in the past we tend to just get into things and either work or, there. Yeah. or live, 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 but there's a sense of, urgency where later on it's not that we don't work hard we do work hard very hard uh, and we are very active but we look at life with different eyes and and taking some distance mm -hmm. well I have that kind of personality as well that I would I will always push forward mm -hmm. I don't take no for an answer mm -hmm. um, and that can create a lot of havoc around me as well <laughs> which I have learned to uh, which I'm still learning to live with and I actually have a personal coach as well that's also inspirational. The fact that we work with external people, that we reach out. Mm -hmm. You, have to, you, cannot, you well. cannot figure yourself out alone. You need help. And there's lots of help out there. And that's one thing that I find is also super interesting. It's that the world is opening up to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. As that's, compared that's to 30 years ago, when you said you needed a, psych a psychologist because, or a therapist because you were not feeling well, people would go like, oops, yeah, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. Today, you're not cool if you don't Whereas have one. Today, today, we embrace it much more. And, and probably because the world is moving faster to work with somebody, whether it's a mentor, a coach, um, somebody who can really help you, allows you to go faster to where you want to be, rather than going around and around and around and reflecting by yourself. So tell us, Lisa, what is this about the advantages of being 50 plus or, or disadvantages? I don't know how you see this, huh? <laughs> well, body wise, it's not great. Uh, last weekend, I, I, I slipped. I slipped, I didn't pay attention and I flew off and I hurt myself so badly. I was like, but healing takes a bit longer. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the disadvantages, but I think that's really the only one because otherwise I find that the brain is way more awake. Mm -hmm. um, compared to how many books have you read today at the age of 50 and how many books you had read at the age of 25 and the, and the topics. Mm -hmm. different. You've just got more data. Sure. Your brain yeah. is more open. You're more flexible. You're more devoted in a certain way to what you do. Mm -hmm. that's it super interesting fun. super interesting because some hey. people think that when you're older you're less flexible you're less adaptable you're less 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 whereas what we notice is that we are more adaptable more flexible difference there and more advanced as well in, in terms of knowledge in terms of self-knowledge in terms of experience in terms of and and kids bring a lot as well you know they they open up they all decide to study different things already that open up opens up a lot of discussions a lot of different topics that you might not really necessarily do. that you might not necessarily look into now yeah. you're you're an employer you know you have employees you've got a very successful business um at work i don't know the age of your employees but even as an employer They're not that young. okay so that's interesting and this is kind of what we're wondering is what can we do, you know, in the in the corporate world or in the if you're an employer, what kind mm -hmm. of advice can you give about employing people that are older? However, wherever you want to cut that off, advantages, disadvantages, thoughts about that. Uh, they tend to, which is probably why the population here is quite young as well. They tend to hire younger people, but they certainly don't go to get the same quality. Okay, that's, like where, no, we, that's, that's where we were going. Yeah. You don't get the same quality. You don't. Right. I mean, so I, I hired an assistant different. recently and she's 45. But she's more expensive. I really had to sit down and think about that. Can I afford her? But yes, I can because, I mean, she came into the company and she just took over. I needed help. I, I There's only so much you can do in a day. And um, if I want to give the company, um, if the company is to be seen as efficient and professional, I needed help. Yeah. And, and that's longer and together. That's a, that's a price to pay. Yeah, absolutely. It's an investment. It's an investment in the company. But the return on investment is different 
than yeah. when you get an experience, maybe cheap from a face value basis. Oh, absolutely. But I when mean, you get all I, the cost, you get peace and peace of mind. So obviously, if you take somebody who's older, they're going to cost more. But but the experience is you just cannot. Money is not important. It's experience. If you want to build a business, you need experienced people around you. You cannot run a business with people that don't get it. I hear two huge things coming out. And first of all, I have to really acknowledge you on something huge. Again, you've asked for help. And if this is a message that can come out of this conversation to all of those, especially mothers, but not only, but I will say especially women. So moms, women, and then all the rest. Often, moms take it all on their shoulders and they do, they do, they do, they do, they do, and they don't ask for help. And I'm guilty of that. I am guilty of that. I'm kind of a, um, uh, what do you say, a um, control freak in the family, even in the family unit. And I really have to take a deep breath and let go to ask for help. So bravo you, Lisa, because along the way, I'm the same. And, you, and you have, you, you have you known to ask for help. It's a really big, great message I think we can pass to people. Yeah. First employee that I have, he's from Nepal. He, um, he's still with me and he's been with me now five years, which is great. And he came to me the other day and, and he said, uh, can I talk to you about something? And I said, yeah. Um, one of the first times he's actually come to ask me about something. Usually I see on him that something's up and I take him to the side and I ask him what's going on. And he said, I was thinking the other night, is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Basically, I told him that, uh, well, first of all, it's entirely up to you. We're all born. We, we are allowed to make choices. Um, and I said, but um, you are building this company with me. He has. He's built it with me. If if it wasn't for him, I would be nothing. Mm -hmm. He's the, he's the one who knows. He's the, he's the he understands. He gets it. Um, I'm trying to make him understand that you are part of this company. You're the backbone of this company. Without you, I'm nothing. And he knows that. And actually, the, 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 yesterday he came back to me and he said, um, I wanted to know that, I, um, that I, I'm very proud of where we are today with the company. That was cool. You can grow. You're growing with the company. You will always be the backbone of the company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's, However, he's getting proud of it. Yeah, he, he's know, getting as, proud as of it. That's super important. And I think mm -hmm. you can make anyone proud in a company as long as you support them and acknowledge them. Oh, that's a wonderful statement. You can make anybody proud. And it's in general, whether it's even yeah. in your family or in your company. You oh, make yeah. Anybody oh, yeah. proud, mm -hmm. whatever, whoever they are. You have to see them. Really see them, look them in their eyes, talk to them. Otherwise, they don't feel valued. And but coming back, we, I would completely left off topic. Just look for experience. Don't look at the money. Look at look mm -hmm. for the experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the flexibility of the mind. Yeah, very good advice. Mm -hmm. The flexibility of the mind is really important. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I the, before I was like, if I could find, and I think if I had my company was in Europe, I would probably easier find easier um, women over fifty to work. For. With me we started with a big question and we wanted to end with a big question is today what were the word thriving means to you and is that any different from what it would have been 10 years 20 years 30 years ago when you're young uh, you think that you're thriving because you have a well-paid job and uh, you can travel and and uh, and you can go out and you have uh, you know a big friends group but that doesn't include the mind at all I think thriving today is about knowing where you are and, and, and you have to study yourself. You have to go deeper. You're not, you're not going to evolve anymore. You can earn, you can continue on that 25 year old kind of thriving of um, just making money and, and, and uh, you know, getting married and having kids and, and then boom comes 40. And that's where a lot of people just suddenly just stop. Mm -hmm. And I find that once you get over that, and you find yourself again, however you do that. It's about self-contemplation, consciousness about yourself, mm -hmm. self-development, which brings flexibility to the mind. Well, they say less is more. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. After the age of 50, thriving, it's not about money. It's not about uh, who you are. You want to be seen everywhere. You want to be, you know, today with all these uh, social media as well. I mean, it's just insane. I love what you said, you know, less is more. And even the I don't care at one point, what I'm hearing in there is I know what I do care about today more and those things I will care about and other things I won't. And what's interesting is what Dominique and I do actually, we've noticed that when people have their head in the steering wheel, working, 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 or making money, they don't do the stop you've talked about. They don't necessarily take the time to stop and take a breath mm -hmm. and assess what they do care about. 
And we, we kind of force that into people's lives. We are the people that people call on as an external resource to have a stop to actually do that 360 about their life to figure out what they do care about. So we are completely aligned. Thank you for sharing your thriving with us, Lisa. Fantastic, fantastic.